So one of the best things about MindsDB is it enables you to automate AI workflows between any source of data and any AI ML model. Um, and the core of that particular automation sequence is the concept of a job. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now. So these jobs can either be run on a timer. For instance, you could run um, a particular command every hour, or it could be based on a trigger. For instance, a new customer has signed up, a new role has been added to my database. That could be an example of a trigger. So here we're actually going to walk through, um, to start with a very simple implementation of a job. And then we are going to um, look at how we can actually analyze crypto prices um, on an automated loop. To, to start with, like anything, we require some data. And uh, with MindDB, you can either connect to any database, any warehouse, any stream, or any application. And here we're going to connect to the Binance application, which is a pre-written integration that exists in MindDB already. And we're going to get a bunch of crypto data. And you can see here on the left of my screen, the Binance DB has been connected. So now I can actually take a quick look at what information is contained in this Binance um, connection. And I can see that I've got a bunch of information about crypto prices. In particular, I'm looking at uh, BTC to USDT here. Um, by the way, you can follow everything I'm doing here, if you want to, in your own time, in the Intro to MindDB as an automation platform here on the right of the screen. So now we have some data, we've taken a quick look at it. We can see we've got the open time, the open price, um, and some other information about these, the particular data. Let's explore the concept of a job. So what we're going to do is put a job on a timer here. So I'm going to use the create job statement. Basically, I'm just going to wrap it around the select statement that I previously wrote. So that's typically how a job would work in MindsDB. It wraps a little bit of syntax, wraps around a particular query that you'd like to run over and over again. So here, we're going to name the job as Binance Data. We're going to use the select statement that I've just written that gets this information here. And we're going to set it, give it an end date, and we're going to say, okay, every day, please update it. So this is just a, let's call it a toy example of a job. Um, there are other ways to, to do this in MindsDB. But anyway, now we've run that query. We've actually managed to automate um, a, this, this pulling of data. Every single day, it will now run um, in the background. So toy example, but let's move on to something um, a little more interesting. So I mentioned that we're going to start to explore this crypto data, what we're going to do is train what's called, we're going to train a forecasting model, a time series model to um, predict the future crypto prices based on this data that we have. So like anything in MindsDB to train a machine learning model, we use the create model statement here. I'm going to call it cryptocurrency forecast model. We're going to take it so anything after the from statement here is going to be used for uh, is selecting where the data is coming from to train the model. So from the Binance connection that I made before, anything that's returned with this SQL statement here, please use that to train the machine learning model. And we're going to predict the open uh, the open price. So this column. Must, there must always be a column specified. The thing we'd like to predict must be available in the training data set, which it is. Um, open price was uh, is definitely in there. Um, and then these are time series, uh, particular forecasting arguments. We don't need them for other kind of models, but we're going to order by the open time. We're going to set a window. So how many, um, how many uh, steps into the past should I take into account for making a prediction? and the horizon. How many steps into the future would I like to predict? So we're going to predict 10 steps into the future with this particular model. So let me just set it away. That'll take um, a couple of minutes to train once it starts going through. Okay, so what we can do is now run the describe command to see where our model is at. So this should probably take two or three minutes to finish training. 
Um, and we can see that by running the describe command, we actually get some information on the status of the model. Once it's complete, that means it's finished training and it's actually available to get predictions from immediately. So awesome, we've now trained a time series model, uh, a forecasting model to predict um, the prices of a cryptocurrency. So next, let's start to look at getting predictions. So first of all, we're actually going to create a view with some of the data that we've got because with MindZB, you are actually able to join data with a machine learning model. Pretty interesting concept, I know, um, but there's a number of advantages and we'll see how easy it is in a second. So I'm going to create a view um, with some of the uh, information from the, um, from the Binance connection that we've established. I'll take a second. There we go. So we now have um, a view created. And what we can do is now get predictions from the model. So what we're going to do is actually join the model that we just trained with the view we just created. And we're actually going to get predictions about the open time, um, excuse me, about the open price and actually a little bit of explanatory information about the open price. Um, and what we're going to do is say where the open time is bigger than the latest. So um, we're going to make some predictions into the future. So let's run this. And what you should see is a number of predictions, 10 steps. Um, my time is, um, so that looks correct. So my time is 16.04. I can see this is a, an hour behind. I think it's my time zone. So we've got the open time uh, 15.05, 15.06. So we can see that every, so for the next 10 minutes into the future, we now have a prediction uh, for the open price. So thank you for watching. The next step we're going to do is actually look at how we actually run this um, via Slack. How can we actually get, how can we, get these predictions that I've created here as alerts in Slack. And once we're there, the concept of jobs will kick in again. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.